Okay, let's talk about X-Men Dark Phoenix. It's your boy D here with the Geek Experience. Remember, hit that like button and subscribe button for more. So, I just got home from seeing this movie, and it's been 20 years of X-Men movies. And over the years, we've seen the movie go down considerably in quality. Considering the, you know, the first ones were so good, and the last ones have been so horrible. Uh, my expectations for Dark Phoenix weren't that high. Considering, you know, the previous ones were incredibly bad. And I got home, and I saw a few reviews. And of course, the whole world is, is hating this movie. And I have to say, is the movie bad? That is correct. Is it the worst X-Men movie? Absolutely not. Uh, I leave the in regards to... I leave that award to X-Men Apocalypse. And if I even want to count X-Men Origins Wolverine, uh, those two are by far the worst X-Men movies. But this one is pretty down on the list. And so, you know, we were teased with, you know, Phoenix way back in X-Men 2. And then we, we saw, you know, the Phoenix in X3, The Last Stand. And, you know, with this reboot, we kind of got it again. And I have to say, you know, I actually liked X3. And by far, it's much better than, than this movie. And it wasn't so much that this movie was just incredibly awful from start to finish. It's just that this movie really didn't know what it wanted to do. Um, it looks like the actors weren't really interested in the material. Uh, the script was very basic and bare bones. And I will have to even go so far as say the CGI was uh, at some times incredibly mediocre. So, just to give a quick synopsis of the movie, uh, the X-Men are a, you know, valued member of society. Uh, they're going around, you know, saving people. And in this particular case, and and don't worry, I'm not spoiling anything. You can see this from all the trailers. There's a situation in outer space, and the X-Men decide to go out there and, and rescue some astronauts. <clears throat> and something happens in outer space that affects Jean Grey. Now... Going from there, you can pretty much tell that this movie just doesn't care about the material it's working with. And when I say doesn't care, I'm I'm talking on the level of Superman 4 bed of ridiculousness. Of, you know, and not to be new, too nitpicky, just, you know, things that just don't work. Especially when you're in outer space. Um, you know, anybody with, with two cents would go, yeah, that doesn't happen in outer space. Anyway, so, lo you know, long story short, Jean Grey, you know, gets hit with some entity that we're never, you know, told exactly what it is. And then she begins to start, you know, losing control of her powers. And then for the rest of the movie, all we see is her struggling with her inner self and everybody else crying. And when I and, and literally when I say crying, I am talking almost return to king level crying. Everybody is constantly crying in this movie. And then, you know, we have we have a villain, which we have no idea, you know, why they're there other than they want to take over. We have no idea who they are, what they are. They just show up 
and that's it. And and that's pretty much the movie. That's that's basically it. That's what makes this movie so bad. There is no character development. There is no really point in anything that's going on. Uh, to the fact that a lot of the movie is just different. I mean, literally, just different set pieces just for something to happen. Uh, like I said in the beginning, they're in outer space. You know, and then later on, we're here, we're there, and then at the end, we're on a train for whatever reason, and then movie's over. Uh, you know, this this is this is pretty bad. There, like I said, there there was this movie had no point, and like I said, the CGI was even worse. There was even one point where I literally was convinced. There is a scene where Raven, played by Jennifer Lawrence, I was com completely convinced that Jennifer Lawrence wasn't even present on site and that they just superimposed her face on somebody else because the CGI was that bad. Or even worse, she was on site and just refused to even wear the makeup and they had to CGI the makeup on her. It it just looked really, really bad. It didn't look right. So, that in a nutshell, like, like I said, is X-Men Dark Phoenix. Not the worst movie, but by far from the best movie. And I have to give Sophia Turner... I have to, I have to give her. She, she tried her best, you know, with the role. But I, I have to give her a little bit of props because now, in a matter of a little bit over a month, she's been equated with probably two of the worst situations an actor can deal with: uh, a very bad ending to a great TV show, and a very bad ending. To what was once a great movie series. <laughs> so I think she's. Uh, she's two for two. With, with bad luck there. Hopefully she can. Uh, turn her luck around. And, and get some good roles in some good movies. But. What I would like to know is. What did you think about. X-Men Dark Phoenix. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. Post it in the comments below. And if you want to hear more of my review slash ranting when it comes to movies, hit that subscribe button. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.